Hello, it's Simon Zucci here. I'm the author of Property Magic, the Amazon property number one bestseller, founder of the Property Investors Network, and I've been investing in property since 1995. And I want to tell you in this video all about successful joint ventures. Now, what is a joint venture? Well, a joint venture is where two or more parties come together and work together for mutual benefit. So in the world of property investing, what might happen is someone might go and find a really good property deal, but guess what? They run out of enough money to fund the deal themselves. So they find someone else who maybe has got some money, but they don't have time, they don't have knowledge or the inclination to go and find a great property deal. So the person with the deal and the person with the money come together and work together for shared mutual benefits. Typically, people do a 50-50 split. Someone's got the deal, someone's got the money, they put it in together, they split the cash flow generated from the property, and they split the future equity growth. Now, it doesn't have to be 50-50, that's what most people do because they seem to think it feels fair. But there are a couple of things I want you to be aware about when you do a joint venture. So the first one is, you know, you're not going to just bump into someone at a network meeting and decide there and then to do a joint venture with them. When you do a joint venture, you're effectively going into business with someone. So I think it's really important to make sure you get to know that person, to understand, you know, do you have similar values to them? Are you aligned? And also make sure your vision and mission is the same as well. So it's no good if you want to flip properties and you know someone else wants to hold long term, that's a clash of values. You're not looking to achieve the same thing. So when you look for joint venture partners, and you could find them at property networking events, property training seminars, or maybe even members of your family or friends or work colleagues, you know, people who you can come together and you can pool your resources. It's really important to get to know each other and make sure there's a good strategic fit, first of all. The second thing that's really, really important, that's a mistake many people make, is you need to agree who is doing what and who is bringing what to the party. Because um, unless you have an agreement in writing, sometimes things go wrong. And in property, there are problems, things go wrong in property, and sometimes joint ventures don't quite work out. And it comes down to a couple of things. Very often it comes down to um, misaligned expectations. You know, you thought they were gonna do this, they don't do it and people fall out. Or sometimes poor communication or people making assumptions that someone was gonna do something and it didn't happen. So by sitting down before you do a deal and thinking through you know, how long do we want, what are we trying to achieve here? Are we buying properties to hold? Are we buying properties to flip? Make sure you're aligned. And then who's doing what? Who's responsible? And when are they going to do it? And what happens if they don't do it? And you also need to do a bit of contingency planning. Think about, well, what happens if the market crashes? What happens if we can't rent it out? What if we need to, what if it gets vandalized? And you need to think about what are some of the challenges and what do you do about those? Now, that's not to try and put you off, um, and most of those things will never happen anyway, but it's about just being aware what would you do if you have those problems? And you know, if you fall out, or you know, for whatever reason, you decide to dissolve the partnership or something's not working, if you have it in writing, black and white, and people have agreed it, it's much easier to get someone to arbitrate and find a fair, successful outcome. Because not all joint ventures work. So just be aware of that. Having said that, the reason people do joint ventures is you can profit from a deal that you might not otherwise do. Or you might get access to deals or money that you wouldn't normally have if you're just doing it on your own. And you find the right joint venture partner, you can achieve so much more. You might have a number of different joint venture partners that work on different projects. And that's absolutely fine. I just wanted to make sure you're aware that it's something you can do, but you need to be careful, get to know the person really well, make sure you have it in writing, and then once you're in the joint venture, make sure you communicate regularly. Let each other know what's going on, especially if there are problems. Sometimes people are embarrassed if something's gone wrong, they don't want to tell their partners, and I can understand that. But if you're partners, you need to work together to solve the problems. The best thing you can do is flag it up as soon as you possibly can so you can work together to find a great solution for everyone involved. So I just want to give you a little bit of an introduction to joint ventures. I hope that's useful. There's going to be more information and training on this channel. So maybe subscribe to this page and we look forward to sharing more information with you. In the meantime, remember, invest with knowledge, invest with skill.